In today's video, I'm gonna show you my tried and true recipe for a barbecue meatloaf, and I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks I've learned along the way as I have made this recipe so many times. Let's get started. Okay, I'm just starting over the stove here with the barbecue sauce. This is kind of optional. If you wanted to make it super simple, you could just use a store-bought um, barbecue sauce, which this is, but then I'm gonna add a few things to it. To make it a little, just a little sweeter, I'm gonna add about an eighth of a cup of molasses. I use molasses in a lot of meat marinades that I do. Like it's a really nice compliment to different kinds of meats. Um, and then I'm gonna add about the same amount of maple syrup, so an eighth of a cup. You could do honey instead if you preferred. And then the last thing I'm gonna add is a half a cup of applesauce. Now this recipe, has applesauce in the meatloaf mixture too. So I just figure to kind of complement that and add more of that flavor to it. It would be really nice to add it to the barbecue sauce and I've done it a few times and I really like it. I'm just basically thinning out the barbecue-ness and sweetening it a little bit. So I'm gonna bring it to a boil and then just let it simmer for a few minutes. Okay, that was just a couple minutes and that is already boiling. So I'm gonna turn it down to the lowest setting and just kind of let it simmer while I'm getting the other part of the recipe together, which should just be about five minutes. I'm using some saltine crackers to make breadcrumbs. I don't usually have breadcrumbs just on hand. So usually I'll have like maybe some stale bread or stale crackers and just use that to not waste it. And we need a cup of crumbs so that might be a cup i'm gonna measure it after i do this so i'm just uh, pulsing it in the nutribullet Ooh, i do not think that is a cup let me get my measuring cup a little closer than i thought i think the rest of this pack will be exactly what i need that is close enough it's a little under but it's fine I'm now I'm gonna show you one of the tricks that I use to make this easier. So it calls for um, a half a cup of chopped onion. I'm just gonna throw that in the blender. I'm gonna throw actually everything in the blender. It calls for a three quarters cup of applesauce. So yeah, this is also dairy free if your crackers or whatever you're using to make your breadcrumbs are dairy free. And then the next thing I need is an egg. So my family doesn't like big chunks of onions anyway, so this kind of works out perfectly. This is gonna look nasty, just, it's gonna look gross for like a minute. You're gonna have a beautiful meatloaf afterwards. No big deal. So let's blend this up. We also are going to just add a little bit of barbecue sauce for flavor into this wet mixture, and I'm gonna add three tablespoons of the barbecue mixture into this other mixture and I'm actually gonna toss the breadcrumbs back in there too and give this a nice blend now we're gonna mix it into the meatloaf and um, I'm still letting this barbecue sauce stay warm here on the stove and just it's just gonna reduce down just a tiny bit and now I'm gonna show you the meat mixture here. This is one pound of ground pork and a little over a pound of ground beef. And so this goes, this is gonna go right in there. It might be better actually not to mix the breadcrumbs into here cause it would just probably come right out. And you could do that in any blender, um, not necessarily a Nutribullet. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of salt and about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And we're just gonna incorporate that in. I didn't put it all in in one shot because I wanna make sure that salt and pepper gets everywhere. And for reference, um, I usually just season all my meat a teaspoon per pound, typically. Um, that has been a really good way to know. Like that's what my family likes. Um, my family likes pretty well seasoned food. So a teaspoon per pound of meat 
Now the saltine crackers have salt and the barbecue sauce has a little bit of salt. So um, I went just a little under that thinking about those two factors. Obviously like a meatloaf, like you can't taste that for salt until it's completely done. And adding salt at the end is just not the same. So I like to make sure I have the right amount of salt in the whole mixture. So that's ready to go. And I'm going to put it, actually I don't cook it in, in loaf pans. Um, what I do is I cook it in, like I divide it in half and then I put it in an eight by eight pan. And then what's in the bottom of this pan is just that I was using it as my spoon rest to not dirty something else. Okay, now my hands have to get dirty. So it kind of like divides up pretty well inside here and cooks into defined loaves. It might take a little longer to cook this way because they are so close to each other and they don't have as much like room to breathe. Anyway, let me wash my hands. I'll be right back. Uh, this is how the barbecue sauce looks now. So I'm gonna put about half of this on top of here and then the other half is gonna go on in the last 10 minutes of baking. Gosh, I need a better spoon than this. Hold up. There we go. So yeah, about half on top now and half on top later. If you like it really saucy, you might wanna make a little bit more. This is not like an extra, extra saucy amount. Okay, as you saw, I should try to get the loaves as even as possible and it's gonna bake for 325 because it's a glass baking dish. If you're using a regular um, metal aluminum baking dish, it could cook at 350, but for me, I'm gonna do it at 325 for an hour or so and I will show you when it's done. And it just needs to reach the internal temperature of 160. So I do use a meat thermometer. That's really the only way that I feel comfortable knowing when it's done. The meatloaf is done. This is how it looks. This is just half of it. As you remember, I divided it into two separate loaves. I'm gonna cut into it and show you how it looks inside and taste it for you. I cooked it for about an hour and 20 minutes. I would serve this with like mashed potatoes and broccoli or mashed potatoes and green beans, something like that. Um, I'm just showing you a piece of it. I didn't make the rest of the things that are going with it yet. It's also good with um, mac and cheese. Perfectly seasoned. It's really good, really simple and easy to make. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you will try this recipe. It is so easy and so delicious. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to keep watching more videos like this. Have a great day. And I'm gonna cut into it and show you guys how it tastes. Show you how it tastes. Yeah. Oops, that one's broken. Let's try again. So, <laughs> we got a nice, uh, onion smoothie. <laughs> That's so disgusting.